Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to talk about overclocking on Intel LJ2011 version 3 platform using Chinese x99 motherboards. Before I get started I need to answer a few questions and clarify a few points. First of all, you can only overclock CPUs which have unlocked multiplier. This applies to all motherboards. It does not matter if you have MSI, ASUS Gigabyte or Tinsha Huananji. These CPUs are Core i7-5820K, 5930K, i7-5960X, Xeon E5-1650 V3, Xeon E5-1660 V3, 1680V3, and a few other Xeon E5-16 series CPUs which are very rare and very expensive. All Xeon E5 V4 CPUs have locked multiplier. You cannot overclock them. For example, Xeon E5-1650 V3 can be overclocked, Xeon E5-1650 V4 cannot be overclocked. All X99 motherboards I have tested, including MSI and ASUS, were not able to overclock Core i7-6000 series using BIOS settings. I have tried the latest available BIOS and the oldest available BIOS. With the latest Windows 10 and all updates installed, the BIOS settings to overclock the CPUs were just ignored. Intel XTU works well. This if you have Intel Core i7-6850K or 6800K and your Tinsha or Huanan G X99 is not able to overclock it, please stop blaming the motherboard and just use Intel XTU. This limitation came to place after Intel had to patch their security holes which were called Spectre and Meltdown. One more important thing is that CPUs with unlocked multiplier cannot be Turbo Boost unlocked. CPUs such as Xeon E5-1650 V3 and 1660V3 require full BIOS on your motherboard. You shall not cut out microcodes from your BIOS. If you receive a motherboard with a cut-off microcodes, you need to flush a BIOS which has full range of the microcodes, otherwise your system will be freezing and lagging every now and then. So far, I do not know any Chinese X99 motherboard which has settings for BCLK frequency or base clock frequency. Thus, it's not possible to overclock any CPUs using BCLK using Chinese X99 motherboards. On branded motherboards, you can try to overclock your CPU and increase BCLK to 101, 102 or 103, but in practice it's usually pointless because with such frequency M.2 PCI Express SSDs refuse to work, you also may have problems with your graphics card and other PCI Express devices. I hope this was clear enough and people will stop asking me how far Xeon E5-2678 can be overclocked. The answer is that this CPU cannot be overclocked. All Xeon E5-2600 and 4600 have locked multiplier and you cannot overclock them with a CPU clock multiplier. Now let's take a look at the detailed hardware specification I have picked up for this test. For the CPU I have Intel Xeon E5-1660 V3, this is a small portable heater which you can use in the winter if it's too cold. I have 32 gigs of RAM, 4 sticks 8 GB each from G-Skill DDR4 3200 CL14, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition, Crucial P1 1TB NVMe SSD, EVGA Supernova 750P2 Power Supply. Three motherboards I'm testing today is MSI X99 MS S04, Huanan Zhu X99 TF and Tinsha X99 D8. The last two motherboards are by far the best Chinese X99 motherboards from two different factories. Both of these motherboards support CPU overclocking. MSI X99 MS04 is an interesting option. This motherboard is an engineering or pre-production sample of MSI X99A SLI Plus or MSI X99A Raider. Right now you can buy it from AliExpress for the price of 130 to 150 euros. Using this motherboard I was able to push my Xeon E5-1660 V3 to 4.3 GHz with 1.34 volts. Integrated memory controller ran at 3.4 GHz and 1.18 volts. Maximum memory speed I was able to achieve with such overclock is DDR4-2666 CL14 at 1.35 volts. With such configuration, maximum VRM temperature of this motherboard was about 60 degrees Celsius. This 4.3 GHz limit of my Xeon E5-1660 V3 is not the motherboard issue. Unfortunately, these Xeon CPUs are very old. And even though you can find multiple reports online that people were able to push these CPUs up to 4.5, even 4.7 GHz, after being used in data centers for years and years, these CPUs degrade and they are not able to keep these high frequencies anymore. With Huanan GX99 TF, maximum stable overclock was 4.2 GHz at 132 volts. 
integrated memory controller ran at the same 3.4 GHz and 1.18 volts. Maximum RAM speed unfortunately is limited to DDR4-2400, but I have reduced timings to CL12 from CL14 specified in the XMP profile. Even though the BIOS has options to set up memory voltage, I do believe that X99TF and X99D8 just ignore this value, this I assume that memory was running at 1.2 volts. With this such overclock and such configuration, on my test stand, Huanangio X99TF peaked at about 75 degrees Celsius on the VRM zone. Jinsha X99D8 achieved maximum stable overclock at 4.1 GHz with 1.3 volts on the CPU, 3.4 GHz and 1.18 volts on IMC, the same as all the motherboards. Memory configuration is identical to Huanangio X99TF, DDR4-2400, CL14 at 1.2 volts. Temperatures were unfortunately a bit too high, 80 or more degrees Celsius. Now let's take a quick look at the benchmark results and see what will be the real-world difference between the expensive MSI X99 and the cheapest Tinsha X99 D8 motherboards. After that I will go through each motherboard and tell a few more details how to achieve overclock on Huananji and Tinsha and what to use with MSI X99 S04. Cinebench R20 as expected, slightly higher clock to Xeon E5-1660 with MSI motherboard is providing slightly better results than the same CPU with a slightly lower clock on Tinsha X99 D8. The difference though is just a few percent. 7-zip compression and decompression. This is probably the biggest gap between MSI and X99 D8 motherboards. Here Tinsha X99 D8 loses 4% in comparison to MSI motherboard. Blender Open Data, BMW and Classroom Scenes. The difference between these three motherboards is up to 4%, basically no difference. DaVinci Resolve, 4K and 1080p tests. Same picture here, the performance between all three motherboards is almost identical. Handbrake does not change the tendency. MSI S04 is slightly faster than X99D8, but the difference is just 2 and 6% in 1080p and 1440p conversion. Battlefield 5 does not see any difference between all three configurations. Performance is almost identical. Far Cry New Dawn is still using just 1.5 CPU cores in 2020, thus this game sees the biggest gap between MSI MS S04 and Tinsha X99D8. The difference between minimal FPS goes up to 15%, the difference between average FPS is just 3%. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Tinsha X99D8 is 2% behind MSI S04. Red Dead Redemption 2 this game does not see any difference between all three configurations. The biggest gap I was able to see is about 9% at minimal FPS, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is known to be notoriously inconsistent with the minimal FPS. F1 2019 One more game which doesn't really bother about which configuration to use. The maximum difference I have seen was 3% with minimal FPS between MSI SO4 and Tinsha X99 D8. Call of Duty Modern Warfare doesn't change much, the maximum difference between these motherboards is 5%. And the last test, 3D Mark, Fire Strike and Time Spy. Huanan GX99 TF is almost identical to MSI S04, Jinsha X99 D8 loses 3 and 4% in Time Spy and Fire Strike. So looking at all of these tests, I can assure you that there will be basically no difference between all these three motherboards in your real gaming or your real workloads. Sure, if you want to achieve maximum overclock for your Xeon E5 1650 or 1660 V3, then MSI X99 SO4 is a good option. Other than that, I don't really see a point why you would have to pay so much more for the MSI motherboard when Tinsha X99 D8 and Huanangi X99 TF are providing very comparable performance for much less money. Now let's talk about each motherboard separately. Starting with MSI X99 S04. The motherboard comes with a BIOS which is identifying itself as MS-7A54. With the stock BIOS I did not identify any issues, it was working perfectly fine. But because my Xeon E5 1660 V3 could not overclock higher than 4.3 GHz, I thought it might be a problem with the outdated BIOS. That's why I tried the latest BIOS for MSI X99A SLI Plus, which is available to download from the official MSI website. Unfortunately, it's not possible to use MSI Utility M Flash to flash this BIOS or BIOS from MSI X99A Raider. The utility is simply not identifying these biases as compatible with MS7A54. To flush this bias on the motherboard, I have used my external CH341A USB flash programmer, 
and the motherboard works perfectly fine with this latest BIOS. MSI SO4 is also able to work with memory speed of DDR4-3200, but with such memory speed it was not possible to overclock CPU or integrated memory controller to any levels. As soon as I applied DDR4-3200 XMP profile and tried to overclock my CPU or IMC, the system became unstable, blue screens and crashes all over the place. That's why I decided to downclock my memory to DDR4-2666 and overclock the CPU to the maximum limit. Even though BCLK overclocking is possible with MSI X99 motherboards, it's basically pointless. Even if I increase the base clock frequency to 100.5 MHz, my NVMe slot does not work anymore and I'm not able to boot into my system and use my NVMe SSD. Those don't hope that if you get a branded motherboard, you will be able to overclock your Xeon using BCLK. Overall, I really like this motherboard, it has very decent VRM, very decent quality, and I did not find any issues which you usually find with the engineering samples or with pre-production samples from factories, which MSI X99 SO4 is. Let's switch to Huanangi X99 TF. Even though the stock motherboard BIOS has options to overclock CPU, this CPU will be limited by TDP or power consumption, as well as electricity current which flows through the CPU. I spent quite some time researching this problem and trying to solve it, because in Intel XTU I am able to increase TDP and the CPU current, but I simply could not figure out how to do that through BIOS. Of course, I could have tested the motherboard with Intel XTU settings, but I wanted to have a proper overclock on this motherboard. While investigating this problem, I have also tried the latest Huanangi X99 TF BIOS, which is available to download from the Huanangi website. Unfortunately, this BIOS does not have any overclocking options, it also does not have any RAM timing options. Thus, I do not recommend to use that BIOS. After getting the disappointed results with the stock Huanangi X99 TF BIOS, I decided to try a BIOS modification from a GitHub user called BIOS I Engineer. He has released two different versions, one for Huanangi X99 TF, another one for Machinist X99Z. Testing with my X99 TF, I was pleasantly surprised of how well it was working. Unfortunately, this bias was also limiting electrical current which flows through the CPU. Luckily for me though, right at this moment one of my subscribers texted me about a potential solution for this problem. There is a hidden bias feature which can be used to configure maximum electrical current which flows through the CPU. I was able to adjust this BIOS and unlock this feature, after that I am able to increase or unlimit maximum current which flows through the CPU and I am gaining full stable overclock, CPU works at 4.2 GHz under any load. Both of these BIOS modifications are available in my Mi 899 application version 101. Thus, if you want to overclock your CPU on Huanangi X99 TF, all you have to do is download my application, start it and flush their desired BIOS. Back to Huanangi X99 TF. Even though the VRM temperatures are kinda manageable and they are staying around 80 degrees Celsius, I did not have to add any external cooling, I am still very annoyed with these fans. The quality is simply very bad and they degrade very fast and start to sound like a helicopter. Another unpleasant surprise was that the motherboard is dropping its PCLK to 99 MHz instead of 100 MHz on the load. I tried to figure out what's going on there, but unfortunately nothing worked and the motherboard just keeps dropping its frequency to 99 MHz. And lastly, my Xeon Fi 1660v3 worked at 4.3 GHz on X99 TF, but it was not 100% stable. The last tested motherboard Tinsha X99D8. Since the motherboard is compatible with the original Huanangi X99TF BIOS, it's also compatible with the BIOS modification from BIOS I Engineer. I have flushed the same BIOS I have used on Huanangi X99TF on X99D8 and it worked with no issues. Overclocking options, memory configuration, everything works as expected. Unlike X99TF, X99D8 has some problems with the VRM. When VRM temperature increases, VRM efficiency decreases significantly and the motherboard starts to overheat very fast, consumes a lot of power and basically shuts down. To be able to keep stable 4.1 GHz overclock on my E5 1660v3, I had to add one extra fan to cool down my VRM zone. Without this fan, VRM was overheating and system was shutting down. 
Previously, I had received the same result using E5 1650v3, which is slightly less power hungry than 1660v3, but if you push 1650v3 hard enough to 4.3, 4.4, 4.5 GHz, it will consume as much power. The picture is basically the same with both of the CPUs. If the VRM temperatures are going up to 80 degrees Celsius, VRM efficiency decreases, and then the temperatures are ramping up and the system crashes. If Juan Andre X99TF drops PCLK to 99 MHz on the load, Jinsha X99TA drops it to 98-99 MHz. In a few cases I have even seen 97 MHz. This is really annoying, but I was not able to find a solution for this problem. It's just how it works. In my personal computer, I'm also using a Tinsha X99 D8 with the Turbo Boost unlocked E52690 V3. Here I have exactly the same problem. Under load, the motherboard drops frequency to 98-97 MHz. Xeon E5 1660 V3 worked at 4.2-4.3 GHz on Tinsha X99 D8 as well, but the same as Huan Anju X99 TF, the system was not stable with such overclock. Overall, I like both of the motherboards from Huananji and Tinsha. Both of them are providing very similar experience. Huananji X99TF or F8 is slightly more expensive, but it also has a bit better quality. Tinsha X99D8 on the other hand is slightly cheaper and does not have the annoying fans, but it's also not as good quality as Huananji variant. Still, in spite of this, Tinsha X99D8 is still my favorite X99 motherboard from China simply because it's cheaper and because it doesn't have the annoying VRM fans. To finish this video, I would like to make a small comparison between SZMZ, it's a factory which is produced in Tinsha and Huananzhi. First, this is my personal experience, I do not advertise for any of these factories and I'm not getting any sponsorship from any of these factories. All products I review on my channel I'm buying with my personal money and I do not have any support from any of these factories. Comparing the number of different products available from SZMZ and Huananji, we can see that SZMZ is usually having a bit richer product lineup. This applies to X99 and X79 platform. Product quality though is slightly better with Huananji. Prices are obviously better for Qinsha or SZMZ. Huananji tends to price their products with a slight premium to demonstrate that they are a better brand than Qinsha or SZMZ. Customer service, this is where I'm very disappointed with SCMZ or Tinsha. I have been in touch with multiple official AliExpress stores from the SCMZ factory and my experience is quite negative. The sellers do not answer my questions, they are speaking rude, they are lying, and every time I'm experiencing any kind of a problem with their product, they're trying to turn the picture outside out and make me be responsible for their faults. For example, after discussing Tinsha X99 GT motherboard problems, I agreed with the seller that I am sending the products back to China and he is paying for the back shipment. After he has received the motherboard back, he refuses to pay the back shipment and speaking to me very rude, also ignoring my questions. On the other hand, Huananji official store from AliExpress is always very helpful. Even if I bought a Huananji motherboard not from them, they are still trying their best to help me. Of course, there are problems which they cannot solve, but they do not lie about those problems and they are not trying to make me be responsible for their issues. A few times the seller was not able to answer my questions and he was contacting their engineers to try to mimic my setup and test and then get back to me with the test results from their engineers. Even if some problems could not be solved, they are still telling me yes, this is a problem and no, we cannot solve it. There is no bullshit and there is no attempt to make me be responsible for their problems. This is my personal experience, maybe you have got quite opposite experience. Thus, please do not stop buying Tinsha products and start buying Huananji products. Buy the product which is making sense for you from the stores which are having good service and providing good prices. For now though, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye. Thank you.